everyone. This is Angela from the website naturallivingalchemy.ca. Welcome to my channel. In this new series of videos, I'm going to be sharing with you different ways that we can start to incorporate plant medicines into the everyday foods that we eat. Now, to, to begin this series, I'm going to be sharing with you a recipe from Rosemary Gladstar's Medicinal Herbs, A Beginner's Guide, and we are going to be making a holy basil infused vinegar. But before we get into that, I just want to let you know that you can check out that description box below and you're going to find a couple different things. You're going to find a link to where you can grab this book for yourself if that's something you're interested in. And you're also going to find a link to the full written blog article that does accompany this video. And in there, you're just going to find where I go into much more detail about the ingredients that we're going to be using for this vinegar today. Our first ingredient is going to be raw apple cider vinegar. Now, what exactly is apple cider vinegar? Well, basically, it's just a vinegar that's made from crushed fermented apples, yeast, and sugar. And it contains so many beneficial things to our body, like acidic acid and citric acid, pectin, vitamins B1, B6, B2, and vitamin C. You're also gonna find potassium, calcium, and various amino acids that are beneficial to helping our body stay in that homeostasis. And there's actually been research showing that apple cider vinegar can help reduce blood sugar and cholesterol levels. Now, what you're going to need in your apple cider vinegar is you're gonna make sure that it's raw, it's unpasteurized, and it's with the mother, okay? So the mother is basically the film that forms during the fermentation process. And that is actually a culture of just various beneficial bacteria. It's similar to what you would find in a kombucha like your SCOBY, which that stands for symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. And that's basically the same thing that's gonna be in your vinegar. And in fact, apple cider vinegar that doesn't have the mother with it is actually a bit more of an inferior product because it's that SCOBY that helps provide you with various health benefits, all right? And it's just, if you look at the bottom, I'm trying hard not to disturb this one so that you can see, but it's just in the bottom, there's that film. That's what you want, you want it to be there. And you just wanna make sure that you shake it up before you use it to incorporate some of that mother just into the vinegar that you're getting. Now that we have some information about apple cider vinegar and why we're using it, let's talk about our holy basil otherwise known as Tulsi or Osimum Sanctum. Now, the taste of holy basil is pungent, it's bitter, and it's sweet. And it's actually those tastes that are telling you about different bodily processes that it likes to assist in and support. So let's first talk about the nerving properties of holy basil. Now, it can work as a nerving sedative, and that just means that it has an affinity for the nervous system in general, and it can help calm the mind. It also works as a nootropic, meaning that it can help improve cognitive functioning. It works as a carminative, just helping to expel excess wind or gas from the system. Now, that pungent flavor that I mentioned just a second ago, that's signaling to you that it works as a circulatory stimulant, and that's just going to help improve blood flow. And the bitter taste that's in there is going to help improve digestion because it's really getting those digestive juices going and those secretions flowing. It works as a diaphoretic to stimulate the immune system, reducing mucus by inducing sweating and just helping reduce histamine activity within the body. And lastly, it can help lower blood sugar because it has an, an influence on the adrenal glands and it can help lower stress and it has been shown to be supportive for both insulin resistance and full-blown diabetes. Energetically, holy basil is hot, it's drying and it's relaxing. All right, it's drying because just think about this for a second, especially when we use anything with like a bitter flavor that's getting our digestion fired up. Well, 
All those digestive juices and secretions do eventually leave your body. That's how she has a drying effect. Now, there are a couple contraindications about when you would want to not use holy basil if you're pregnant. There's conflicting evidence showing that it may actually be damaging to embryos. So that is definitely something that you would want to avoid. And it can also slow down the clotting process within your body. And I'd really like if you could avoid it two weeks before or after surgery. Now, most importantly though, I want you to remember, I'm not a doctor. None of what is on this channel is actually considered medical advice. It is here for entertainment and educational purposes only. And you're really gonna to wanna to make sure that you talk to your healthcare professionals before following any of my advice. The ruling planet of holy basil is Jupiter and the ruling element is fire. Well, there's a couple other things about holy basil that I really do wanna share with you. So in Ayurveda, which is a 5,000 year old medical system, it is heavily practiced in India and Nepal, they have used holy basil to combat a plethora of conditions, including, but not limited to, stress and anxiety, coughing and asthma, intestinal issues, and including diarrhea, fevers, arthritis, different eye conditions, or ear aches and different ear pains. It can help with hiccups or ulcers. It can help with heart or artery conditions, even back pain and different skin conditions. So as you can see, this is definitely something that can support so many different things that we just might run into. Now, all of that's great, but what do you actually do with this vinegar? Well, what do you want to do with it? Do you want to use it as a marinade? You can use it as a salad dressing, which is that's what I'm actually primarily wanting to do with this specific vinegar. You could add it in... Um, Drizzle it over roasted vegetables or fish or maybe even chicken. You could splash it into soups or stews to just add a little bit more flavor, or you could just help it season your stir fries. Now let's put this all together. So you are going to need either dried, like I'm using, or fresh holy basil. Now, if you do happen to have some fresh, you're going to need half of a cup. And you're going to want to make sure that it is nicely washed, it is clean, it doesn't have any dirt, bugs, none, none of that on it, okay? So wash it off, and then you're going to want to bruise the leaves. Use something like a mortar, mortar and pestle to do that. But since I am just using dried, okay, because that's all I can find right now, you're going to use one to three tablespoons. So I'm going to put three in here. Now, you're going to also want to make sure that you sanitize your jar, okay? So all I did to sanitize this one is I put it in a 220 degree Fahrenheit oven just for 20 minutes, just to make sure that it is good, it is clean, it is sterile. I'm not gonna be introducing anything unwanted into this infusion. So to that, you're going to just want to then add your vinegar. So you're going to want to add enough so that you're leaving about a quarter inch of space over the top. Now I have seen different recipes um, I have seen different recipes actually add different um, hot or cold vinegar. It's up to you what you want to do. I find that I'm just going, I find that if you're adding heat to things unnecessarily, sometimes you're actually damaging the beneficial parts of those ingredients just by heating them up. So that's why I'm choosing for this one, just to leave it just at a room temperature, okay? So then all you do is you just make sure that everything is nicely incorporated, it is nicely stirred, and that's it. You're gonna then put on your sanitized lid, okay? Important, we're also going to throw a label on it so that we remember exactly what is in here, all right? And you're just gonna shake this up, 
make sure it's all nicely mixed and incorporated. And then you're going to store this in a cool, dark place for three to four weeks. Once you've reached the third or the fourth week, you're gonna just wanna taste your vinegar and you're gonna see if that's the flavor you want or if you want it to infuse for just a little bit longer. Once this vinegar has reached a flavor of your liking, you're just going to take this, you're gonna pour it through some cheesecloth, however it is that you like to strain your herbs. I like to use just a little metal um, strainer with some cheesecloth lined in it, and I find that works quite well. So you're gonna to wanna to store this in the refrigerator and use it within six months. The dosage for an infused vinegar would be two to three tablespoons. You could put that over your salad that you have every day. Or you could even just drink a just a small toddy of it, less than a quarter cup every day, okay? Just to really get all of those health benefits from the Tulsi as well as from the apple cider vinegar. And I did give you a couple other ideas that you could use this for, but why don't you comment down below and let me know what do you plan on using your infused vinegar with? A few things to just keep in mind. So if you're noticing that your vinegar has become cloudy or it's showing signs of like mold, just throw it out, just you're gonna need to start over, okay? I don't want you to just scoop some of it out. There are different, if you were fermenting, you could actually do that, but this isn't part of a fermentation process. So if you found any mold, you're just gonna wanna discard the whole thing. Now, here's the other thing that you can do. You can get as creative as you want with this vinegar. You could help enhance its flavor or add other medicinal properties. Like maybe you wanted to put some garlic cloves in it or some like whole hot chili peppers or just sprigs of rosemary, sage, or thyme. Whatever it is that you're wanting to do, it's your medicine, have it. So be sure to come back next week because I'm gonna be sharing a recipe with you for a garlic and sage herbal infused oil that you could add to this vinegar. Okay, or you can use it on your own. We'll go over that in that video for sure. And don't forget to hit that like button and share this video with anybody else who you think might enjoy it. Maybe consider subscribing to the channel so that we can spend more time together and you don't miss any of these future videos. You can find me on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram, so be sure to connect with me there as well. I do want to thank you for spending this time with me today, especially if you made it to the end of this video. And may you find peace wherever you are.